Hello and welcome to Data Research Labs. For today's Excel Quick Trainer, we are going to discuss filtering in Excel. This is video number 10 of a planned set of training videos on basic Excel usage. The target audience is students and the objective is to get you up to speed quickly on using Excel. First up, why would I need a filter? So why would you need a filter? Well, there's times when you don't want to see all the data. You just want to see a subset of the data or specific rows. So for example, here, maybe I only want to see the Seattle rows. So with a filter, drop down here, I can just select only the Seattle rows and it returns just the Seattle rows. That's why you'd want to use filters. Next up, how do I add and remove filters? So how do you add filters? Well, there's two ways. There's one way that I don't use too often, but that's to make your table into a formal object. So here's my table and I can click somewhere in the body of that table and I can go to the insert menu and I can go to tables and I can click table. So I'm going to make this object into a table. Now notice that because I clicked here, Excel's smart. It goes up until it finds a stopping point. It goes down to stopping point left and right. And Excel figures out what the dimensions of my table is. It believes it's A1 to Z24. Let's scroll down and see. Yep, 24 and out to Z. Oops. Yep, so Excel guessed properly at the dimensions of my table. Uh, does my first row have headers? Yes, it does. So I'm going to leave that checked and I hit OK. And that's the part I don't like about this method. Uh, Excel automatically has formatting options. Now there's lots of table styles I can select from if I want yellow, if I want green, whatever. Lots of options. But uh, I typically like to do my own color styles. Anyway, once you have selected, inserted the table object on top of your data and picked a formatting, well, that's irrelevant. But anyway, Excel also automatically puts the filter drop downs on every one of the column headers for you. So if I want to go here, there's all my options and I can filter down to just a couple of the sub options, voila. Well, let's undo all of that and get ready for the second way to apply filters, which is the way that I do it. So the way I usually use filters is start with my formatted table here and I click anywhere in the table, doesn't matter where, and then I select the menu item home and the uh, filters and sorting and filtering and the filter button. It's a toggle button right now. It's off. If I click it, it's depressed. If I look at it now, see how it's gray? Click it again and it's off. That's how I turn filtering on and off. On, the drop downs are present. Off, drop downs are gone. And then I'm going to turn it back to on and you'll see that the, it gets depressed. Um, so that is how I use it. Let's see. I don't have any, notice that I don't have any altering color patterns in here. If I select the city Seattle, just like we did previously, it's just going to roll up nicely. If I did have alternating patterns, like the table before, then they might not come out nicely. I might have two patterns tied together. That's the advantage to doing the insert table method, is that it'll always have the alternating patterns. So just a side thought about the two difference between the two table types and filter, the way you apply the filters. Oh, and one final thought. So how do I clear the filters? How do I get all the data back? Well, I can click the drop down and I can just click select all. That's one way. Or I can collect, click clear filter from city. They both do the same thing. So I'll click the clear filter from city. And if I look at the drop down, clicking that button, which is now disabled, had the same effect as checking each of them or clicking that. So that's how you can return all of the data back to where you started. Next up, how do I use a filter? So how do you use a filter? Well, we pretty much already hit on it when we did the city of Seattle and we unselected and selected the one we wanted, but you can do two. They don't have to be, they can be all over the place. Hit OK. And there's my two selections. Also notice the drop down when there's no selection is just a little drop down arrow indicating click me. I'm a drop down and you can filter rows based on my contents. But once a filter selection has been made, notice how, zoom in there. And I guess it's not going to let me zoom in anymore. It always stays the same size roughly. Anyway, the filter button changes to a filter with a drop down when selections have been made. Uh, one other thing to point out, I can have a filter on here. I can have a filter on here. Now I've got 
two columns have a filter and my data set shrunk more and maybe I want to do another filter, do a filter on age and I'll just select two of the ages. And now I've got three columns with filters. Now I could go into each and click select all or clear filter from age and click this one and clear filter from here. Or if I want to clear all the filters all at once, I can just go up here and hit clear. Bam, it just clears all the filters. So that is how you use a filter. Next up, filtering on text fields. So now that you understand the basics of filtering, it's time to dig a little deeper. Let's start with filtering on a text field. In the name filter here, notice how all the values are unique. There's no duplicates in there. Excel has gone through and given, made it a distinct list. And also notice how all the values are sorted. Excel has sorted all the values for you. Notice in this search field, if I click into it and type K, immediately the filter drops to only names to have a K in it. These three start with K, this one has a K at the end. And notice this add current selection to filter also appears. Now if I do an E, only names to have a K and an E in them. And if I do an N, and so on. So it drops down to just the values that match my search criteria up above. So I'm about to hit OK in a minute. And when I do, the data behind will be filtered to just these two values. But before I do that, I want to point out that I could also check this add current selection to filter. And what that would do is whatever filter I had going on before, none right now, but if I had a filter, it would add this filter on top of that one. So you could do something like filter, use this to filter on one or two cities and you'd have half the data set. And then you could come back and do another filter and put in a search and add to that and search for everyone that's in Lincoln and Olympia that has a name of Ken or Jerry. But we're just gonna go ahead and leave this blank, hit okay, and there's our three values that have K-E-N in them. Now there's one other set of filter options I want to look at that are text related. So in filters, we've already talked about some of this. We've talked about the standard filters here in the search. There's a text filters pop up and I can look for, I can filter down to rows that equal a value, does not equal a value, begins with a value, ends with a value, contains a value, does not contain a value and we'll talk about custom filter later. So let's pick with hmm, anything that uh, contains EN in it. So those are all the names with EN in it. There's an EN, there's an EN, there's an EN. So pretty handy. Drop down text filters and any of these different options that you wanna use that aren't natively a part of this. I'm gonna go ahead and clear the filters and get set up for the next demo. Next up, filtering on numeric fields. Next, let's try filtering on numeric fields like age here. So let's look at the drop down, and just like text, we have a distinct list of all possible values, and it's sorted in the proper order, low to high by default. And the standard filter criteria are gonna work just like the text. You unselect and then select whatever you want. So I'll select those values, and the filter is limited to just those. So let's clean these filters out. And next we're gonna look at the number filters option here. And this is interesting, this is completely different from the text filters. Well, equals does not equal is in the text filters, but greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, between, these are not the text filters. And these are kind of nice. Uh, but here's something that's even cooler. Top 10, above average and below average. Let's look at the top 10 we get a drop down. Now it's defaulted to the top 10 items, but I could do the bottom 10 and they don't have to be 10. I could do five if I wanna look for outliers and I could look at percent instead of items. So pretty neat and I'll hit okay on the filter and voila, age, the uh, bottom, lower values come in to play and, and that's all that shows up here. Pretty nice, the numeric field, number field options that you have. Uh, I never pointed this out earlier, but look over here. You can see row 10, and between 10, rows 11 and 12 are gone, and that's what this little, right in between the splitter. So not that it matters, but just pointing out that you can see where the gaps are in the numbering when the filter is applied. And when I go and remove the filter, no gaps. Next up, filtering on date fields. 
Now let's try filtering on a date field. There's one date field in this demo data right there, birth date, bogus birth dates. So how do we filter on that? Well, same as always, click the drop down. But look at this. We don't have a full date. No, Excel has gone and set them out as years, which we can expand, and then months, which we can expand out to days. It's pretty nice how Excel sets that up, gets a distinct list of years and months and days underneath of each. So if I wanted to select, uh, go back up to the top, unselect everything, and then select just 1963, July and September birthdays, hit OK, and there we go. One other difference on date filters is this date filters option. Look at all these differences. Yeah, you have equals. I think that's the only one that text, number, and date all have is equals a value. But uh, date filters have before, after, between, and so does number, numeric also. But they have tomorrow, today, yesterday, next week, this week, last week. Pretty neat. Next quarter, this quarter, next year, this year. Let's go to the drop down. Year to date. None of these are going to work because it's a birth date field and the data I have goes back years. These are all uh, current centric. They're all focused around the, the recent past, the present, and the recent future. So let's just go to all dates in a period and let's look for all dates in April. And there we go, there's two birth dates in April. So that's pretty nifty, these date filters. And is there anything else? Nah, there's quarters and there's months. So we could pick all the quarter four birth dates. Next up, custom filtering. Custom filtering. So all data types, text, numeric, and date, have on their date filters at the very bottom this custom filtering. I'm going to go ahead and click it. And they're all similar. They all show rows where whatever the field is equals, does not equal, is after, is before, etc. Does not contain. Those are all the same. You have an and and an or and you have another option. The only difference is that the date dialog box here for the custom auto filter has these little buttons that let you pick a date and the date will get plopped in so that you don't have to manually go pick one from the drop down, which is looking in the body of the table for value. So either way, you can pick it by date or pick it by a field value. And if I were to go to, say, a text field and text filters and go to the bottom custom filter, it doesn't have that little date box out there. That's the only difference. Other than that, these are all the same. Next up, color filtering. Color filtering. Wow, so I did not know about this feature until I was doing some background research to create this video. Basically, I know what I want to discuss, and I go in and write it up, but then I go do a little bit of background research to see if I missed anything or had any gaps in my content. And wow, did I have a gap on this one. So why is this such a neat new feature? Why is it such a big deal? Well, the best way to explain is for me to show you the way I used to do it, and then we'll compare it to the new way. So what I used to do is I would insert a column. So we'll insert a column here. And we'll call it FU for follow-up because I don't want that to be blue. But basically, these are columns that as I'm working, I'm going through and I decide, oh, I need to follow up on that. And I'm working through my list of 100 rows. Oh, I need to follow up on this one. And I might have four or five rows that I need to follow up on. And I would tag them in this way, inserting a column, adding an X. Sometimes if I had hundreds and hundreds of lines, I would use the control down and control down, control down, and I would just jump from item to item and flow through the screens. And that's fine, that can work. But then I would also use this filter and say, well, filter to just the X's. And it works, but I had to add an extra column. And the new way is better, because the new way, I just color the cell that I want to come back to for follow-up. I don't need this column. Let's get rid of it. I don't need it. So now I have my data. I'm not having to alter my data sheet. I'm just changing the color, changing the formatting. And then the cool thing, this is what the color filtering is like. I do filter by color, and Excel is smart enough, just like with text, numeric, and date fields, it's smart enough to make a unique list, a distinct list of all the possible colors. Actually, let's go do this. Let's go make a different color. We'll make it blue. And, oh, blue's bad because that's my title color, so let's make it orange. And Excel should be smart enough, and it is. Filter to the oranges. Filter the color to the yellows, filter to the whites, or remove the filter. Anyway, pretty neat feature. And I'm sure now that you're aware of it, when you are editing or peer reviewing someone's spreadsheet, you can just go apply colors all over the place and then filter to those colors. So 
so that you can discuss it for your peer review or return to do any edits or follow-ups that need to be done. Pretty neat feature. And finally, advanced filtering. Advanced filtering. So here's another feature I've not previously used because I was unaware of it. But rather than trying to explain it, I'm just going to demo it. Let's start by inserting several rows up here at the top to give ourselves some white space. And this is just one way to do it. You don't have to. I just think it's cleaner to do it this way. So let's do a column header. We're going to build a range of filters here. That's what we're doing. And then we're going to apply those filters to the data below. So the first thing we're going to do is type in city. because so I like to filter by city. And this city has to exactly match the column name down here by which we're going to filter. And let's do another filter mm, mm, name. We'll do a few filter on name, which exactly matches that. For city, mm, what values do we want? Seattle, Lincoln. For names, what do we want? Mm, John, Jack, Jenny, Ken. Just do those four names. Next, we need to apply this, these cells under city and names as a filter. So to do that, we're going to hit data, filter, and advanced. And the pop-up jumps up and immediately Excel already is aware of the filter table that we established before. So it's pre-filled that. And we just need to select the criteria range. So I could hand enter the criteria range or I could click this little arrow and scroll back up. And I'm gonna to wanna to select it's important to get column names and all the values. And it's okay that these are blank down here. You want to get the maximum number of rows that capture all of your different uh, filters. I could have just done a filter on city only. I could have done a filter like I'm going to do now with both columns. I could add a third, a fourth, a fifth column. These column names don't have to line up with these, but the name has to exactly match. And that name has to match. And if I wanted to add widget, widget would have to exactly match. So let's go ahead and click this drop down, which selects the value. And let's go ahead and hit OK. I'm not going to do unique records only. If there's two or three records that are the same, fine. But let's go ahead and hit OK. And voila, I have cities, Seattle and Lincoln. Ooh. Huh. Omaha's there. That means that it was an or and not an and. Interesting. Very interesting. Let's test this theory out. So Kent. Oh, interesting. Ken and Kent. So it's a like operator too. That is bizarre that Kent is in there. So I just confirmed it is an or when you have two different values. I don't know how useful this is, but if you wanted to have your filters derive from table values, that's how you would do it. Thank you for watching. And please, if you found this video helpful, click like and be sure to subscribe below.